Good morning, everybody. This morning, I'm going to touch a little bit on uh, what I call that infernal doggone Internet of Things, um, which is abbreviated normally as IDIOT, sometimes pronounced idiot. Um, this past week, I got a help desk ticket from uh, our laboratory clinic um, that said they have uh, three of these, um, they call them lab guards. They're basically uh, refrigerator temperature monitors and say they haven't been working since May and uh, they need them right now. So uh, I don't know what a lab guard is. I didn't set this up. I have no idea who did, but apparently it's connected to our network. Um, so I asked her if she could go over to the uh, emergency department with me and show me one. So when we got there, we go over to uh, one of the refrigerators. Um, there's two or three of them over there. Uh, we only visited two of the refrigerators. And then she showed me a little box attached to it with a little temperature probe that you know, fishes around inside the door to report on the temperature of the refrigerator. And they store things like um, you know, vaccines or blood or whatever in this, this, these refrigerators. So I looked at this little box and um, there was nothing on it indicating it was working or anything. I said, well, it's, it's not plugged in because I could see a power port with nothing plugged into it. She says, oh, no, it doesn't need one. It's got a battery inside. And she proceeds to open it up and show me that, sure enough, inside there is a battery that they replace every three to six months um, to make the thing work. Um, but there was no, and I could see there was an antenna in there. So obviously it, it operated with some sort of radio. Um, so I thought at the time, well, maybe it attaches to our wireless network. Um, I did some searching on our wireless network and couldn't find anything. Um, there was a, a number in there that appeared to be similar to a MAC address. I searched for that on our wireless network, couldn't find anything. So the lab director called support and they informed me that there's a base station that uh, needs to be connected. So I went back over to ER and started looking for the uh, base station. I couldn't find anything. So I emailed support back and said, um, can you please tell me what this base station looks like? So they send me a picture, said, uh, here, it looks like one of these. So I thought, oh, great. Now I know what I'm looking for. I went back over there and searched and searched and searched. And finally, I found it. And on the bottom, there is a MAC address. Well, that's wonderful. Now I can search for that. So I took a picture of it and uh, started searching for the MAC address, um, but I could not find anything. So, and it wasn't that MAC address because that, that picture I just showed you wasn't an actual picture. So, um, so I just took the first three digits or whatever you want to call it of the, uh, of the MAC address and searched for that. And uh, sure enough, lo and behold, came up on this particular switch, on this particular port. Um, I've since changed the port alias, but before it just said radio room. I said, aha. So I went there into the radio room, plugged my wireless, or not my wireless, my wired scanner into it. It's a NetScout land meter. Uh, plugged it in there. Um, cable reported good. I could see the switch port was on the correct VLAN and uh, everything was working. So just as a double check, I went into the switch and I checked and on that port, there was no MAC address. So it couldn't see anything on that port. So I went to um, double check and see if there's anything connected to the port. And sure enough, there is not. It does not sense a device connected to the port. So the port is enabled, but it's in a ready state as opposed to active. Um, so it doesn't see anything there. So I went back to the ER. This is now my third trip. Took a picture of it and sent it back to other support people to say, I'm not seeing any network activity on the link lights. Um, I'm not seeing any other kind of power status indicator. Um, I believe this thing is dead. I sent that email back to them. I also sent it to the lab director. Um, she agreed that the device indeed looks like it's dead and thanked me for my help.
So all of that was to find a device that was poorly documented and everyone forgot about. So it's just really important that uh, when th these things do get installed that you, you try to make as detailed of instructions as you can and leave them in a place where the next guy, that would be me, <laughs> could find them because the last guy didn't document this really well. I'm sure he knew all about it, but uh, so yeah, it's just as a network admin, it's really important to, to document these things. Um, so I, I have documented as best I can for me and I'll share all this with the next guy when, when I move on. Um, I took pictures, I wrote descriptions, um, and I also emailed them to the lab director so she would have a copy as well. So anyway, that was uh, about two hours of my life this week, and, um, but all's well that ends well, because I can close a help desk ticket. So I hope you, uh, if you didn't find this informative, I hope you at least found it entertaining. Um, just one, one little episode in the week of a network admin's life. We'll catch you guys all later.